Hello my friends and welcome to the Electric Viking. Now thank you for subscribing to the channel. We are now making three videos per day instead of two on average. Now as many of you have been watching this channel already know, BYD is absolutely surging this year and I feel kind of stoked that many of you followed my advice and decided to invest in BYD several months ago. Now this is just the start of the iceberg. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the start of the S curve. In many ways, BYD is the company that many believe Tesla is. In fact, in many ways they're similar, but BYD, like I said, is even more vertically integrated than Tesla. Not many people know that BYD is the fourth largest battery manufacturer in the world, but they may have the best battery technology in the world based on a range of different variables when you include cost. Now the Blade battery has given BYD an enormous price advantage and obviously it allows BYD to have electric vehicles that will last far longer than any ICE vehicle and longer than most battery powered vehicles on the market now. The Blade battery should give you more than a million kilometers of range before you start to see more than 20% battery degradation. And BYD has been working on its 3.0 design. Now, what is the 3.0 design? Well, the 3.0 design is basically BYD's new platform. And contrary to popular belief, this is not a reference to BYD's Blade battery. Yes, the Blade battery is part of this new design, but it's significantly more involved than just the Blade battery. Now, BYD claims the new 3.0 design has four distinct advantages. These are intelligence, efficiency, safety, and aesthetics. And yesterday, BYD actually announced more information about the new 3.0 platform. Some of it is marketing spiel. Some of it just sounds like, um, well, bullshit, to be honest. And some of it is legitimately good, legitimately impressive. So I'm going to try and help you understand what is marketing and what is legitimately impressive. Now, BYD are saying that it will allow its EVs, this new design, to reach 100 kilometers an hour within 2.9 seconds. Now that means nothing because of course that will only apply to certain models and those models haven't even been announced or released yet. So that's neither here nor there. Now, more importantly, it will provide a range of up to 1000 kilometers and allow you to charge the battery up to 150 kilometers within five minutes using new technology that's based on their 800 volt architecture. Now in contrast, a Tesla vehicle can currently be charged up to 121 kilometers within five minutes. Now, we haven't seen any specific details on this new charging ability yet. The BYD Dolphin doesn't have super fast charging like a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y or even a Tesla Model S or Model X. But, of course, the more expensive vehicles in BYD's range, I'm sure, will be released soon with this new faster charging technology. Now, the 1,000 kilometers of range. There's idiots on YouTube posting clickbait saying that the Dolphin will have 1,000 kilometers of range. If you've watched that, well, you've just wasted 10 minutes of your life, unfortunately, because it's just bullshit. There won't be a Dolphin, a BYD Dolphin, the hatchback, it won't have 1,000 kilometers of range. There will be three different variants. There's actually technically five variants in China, but there's really, we can break that down into three real variants and two different battery pack sizes. Now, the two different battery pack sizes, one will give, the base model will give the car 400 kilometers of range and the higher range model will give 500 kilometers of range. Now, in the real world, you're gonna be looking at about 300 kilometers of range and 400 kilometers of range, respectively. Nowhere near 1,000, of course. But I'm sure that BYD in future will bring out newer, more expensive vehicles with bigger battery packs that will give you up to 1,000 kilometers of range. Now, this was to me the biggest news with the 3.0 battery system. The 3.0 system will actually feature BYD's new high efficiency heat pump that functions under most extreme temperatures, i.e. from 30 minus 30 Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. Now, Lithium iron phosphate batteries do not perform well in cold temperatures. They do not. That is a detraction from them. If you live in a cold place, 
in a very cold place, you probably don't want to get a lithium iron phosphate battery. But with this new heat pump, that is going that will significantly help the new lithium iron phosphate blade battery to be able to handle cold temperatures. BYD say that the cold weather range will increase by 20% as a result of this new heat pump, which reduces energy consumption per 100 kilometers by 10%. BYD's new in-house SIC electronics control chip will boost the packing density by 30%, increasing the maximum efficiency by 99.7%. I have no idea what that means. Hopefully at some point, BYD will disclose to me what that actually means. Now, BYD itself makes these SIC semiconductors. And as many of you know who've been watching this channel, BYD is the only automaker that makes its own chips. A huge advantage for the company, considering there is a global bottleneck when it comes to semiconductor supply chips. And this is causing companies like Toyota to sh literally shut down their factories. Now, last month, Neo said its sales were significantly affected by semiconductor supply chain shortages and their sales dropped by about 25%. Whereas on the other hand, BYD sales increased by about the same amount. So you can see how this ability to make their own semiconductor chips is a huge advantage for the company. Now, the new 3.0 platform also features the world's first eight in one electric powertrain. Bit of marketing here. And BYD manufactures all the components itself, not marketing. These components include the motor, the motor controller, the reducer, onboard charger, DC converter, high voltage distribution box, vehicle controller, and the BMS. Now the overall efficiency of the 8-in-1 powertrain is at least 89%. I don't know exactly what that means, sadly, but I've emailed BYD. Hopefully, they'll give me a response. Now, one big factor which does matter. Blade battery has been integrated into the chassis of the skateboard in the new platform. And it's the first time in the industry that we've been able to see a doubling in the structural rigidity of the chassis as a result of the batteries being part of the structure. Tesla is aiming to do the same thing with its new 4680 battery cells. Now the blade battery is the safest and cheapest battery in the industry. And there was rumors that BYD would supply these batteries to Tesla, but BYD has debunked these rumors. Probably because it needs all the batteries it can get for itself. Now, BYD says it is building its operating system, which will be named its BYD OS. And this will be a complete decoupling of software and hardware, which will help them to reduce manufacturing and maintenance costs. I don't know how, but that's what they're saying. Now, since they're building these, the operating system themselves, they could frequently push over their updates, making this ability to fix any bugs or actually give you extra features easy in a way that Tesla does and while well, Neo actually does this as well. In addition, Xpeng does as well. Now, BYD say a little bit about their autonomous driving abilities, but that's not worth talking about because I don't think those will exist for a number of years. But the new BYD operating system because it decouples software and hardware, this means that other OEMs could integrate their own hardware and software to the ePlatform 3.0, and BYD could then update this through an over-the-air update. Now that's what BYD is saying. I don't know how exactly this will play out in future, but it looks as though BYD are focusing on being able to control all of the car's componentry features, everything through computers, which is what Tesla aims to do right now. And Tesla pretty much is able to do that. They're pretty much the only manufacturer in the world that's able to do this for everything. Now, besides using this new 3.0 platform in its own vehicles, of course, BYD have said that they're going to share the platform with other companies. Wang Shanfu, who is the CEO, said that BYD's three recent joint ventures with Daimler, parent company of Mercedes, Toyota and Didi Shusing Co. mean that these companies may utilize this platform. Now, I significantly doubt that's going to happen because I think BYD will become one of the world's largest automotive companies and they're headed in that direction right now. But you never know. Now, another benefit to the platform is it focuses on high-level intelligent driving. The smart domain control architecture of BYD, BYD's new system integrates four domain controllers. These are intelligent power, intelligent vehicle control, intelligent cockpit, and intelligent driving. 
The domain controllers would centralize the functions of groups rather than each function going through its own individual ECUs, cutting down on the number of ECUs actually needed in the car. Now these four domain controllers have increased BYD's vehicle response efficiency by 50%. Makes sense, right? You're cutting down the number of systems you're having to go through. Therefore, the vehicle response is much faster. Now with the CPU integration, BYD has increased computing power by 30% in this new platform. And it is the first Chinese automaker to mass produce domain controllers, which is a crucial milestone for electronic architecture, say BYD. So which cars from BYD will have this new platform? Well, all new cars going forward will have the new platform. But the first of those is the new EA1 or the Dolphin as we know it now. The new Dolphin will be produced from this new platform. And in addition to that, the second model will be the Yen Plus, which I've made a video on. I'll put a video to the Yen Plus in the description below so you can see that vehicle now. Why would you want to know about the Yen Plus or the Dolphin? Well, you should want to know about them because these are cars coming to Europe, coming to Australia, coming to New Zealand, coming to the UK. So if you're in one of those countries, you may be able to buy one of these. And I'm telling you, it may be your next car, because there are some very compelling reasons to buy one of these, including price, battery quality, and range, and price, did I mention price? Yeah, price, that's, that's a good one. Now, in addition to that, BYD also is planning to unveil two B-class and C-class vehicles on this platform very soon within the next few months. With that said, BYD can customize this new platform a little bit like the MEB platform for Volkswagen, for all kinds of different sizes and types of vehicles. Now, in addition to this, BYD intends to launch a luxury brand in China for high-end cars in 2023 that will utilize its super fast charging 3.0 platform. So I'm guessing that these 1000 kilometer range cars that can do 2.9 seconds of zero to 100 kilometers an hour, zero to 62 miles an hour, they're probably what is gonna be part of BYD's new luxury marquee in 2023. And I expect these vehicles to be also utilizing BYD's new super fast charging capability. Now, if we look at the Chinese insured stats for cars, this can give us some good numbers on true vehicle sales in China. Now, BYD had almost a 22% share of the Chinese new energy vehicle market in August, almost 22%. Now that includes hybrids, plug-in vehicles, plug-in battery powered vehicles, and pure battery electric vehicles. Now, people are just not grasping what an incredible growth rate BYD is on this year and their ability to sustain that growth because of being the world's fourth largest battery manufacturer and because they manufacture so many of the parts themselves. Now, don't expect huge profits at BYD over the next two years. Currently, BYD is investing heavily in this new architecture, in being built, being able to build this new architecture, in being able to build new batteries, in being able to build new EVs. But their growth is going to be off the charts. I love what they've done with this new architecture, and I think it is the future of their cars. Fortunately for BYD, the lithium-ion phosphate battery is the future of vehicles, and that just happens to be the battery, the battery type that BYD produces. Thanks for watching the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.